Hi, this is your host Sabil Bhatia and welcome to another episode of TFLS Talk. Dynatest recently, uh, of course, are hosted its annual user conference and as expected, they made a ton of announcements, including the expansion of Grill Data Lakehouse, Automation Edge, App Engine, and uh, a load of other announcements there. And to go deeper into these announcements today, we have with us Bob Wambach, VP of Product Marketing at Dynatrace. Bob, it's great to have you on the show. Pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Let's talk about the event. How was it? Because due to COVID, uh, there were a lot of restrictions, and now events are opening up. People can now travel. So talk about uh, what was the experience like? I think the energy at the event was amazing. Everybody was um, happy to be in person again. Um, so you could you could really feel that excitement. You could feel the energy. We The first day, we offered... Uh, hands-on training and that was sold out um, and people were super excited to to just be there working with other people learning with other people so we did have a slew of great announcements at the show but I think part of what people were just just customers talking with other customers and, and sharing best practices challenges talking about the macro net economic environment so just the ability to get out there and network i i think was huge for a lot of people so it was a fantastic show you folks made a lot of announcements there can you talk, share you know it was the biggest set of announcements in the company history so um from a technology standpoint last october october 2022 we introduced grail data lake house that's a massively parallel processing lake house that takes advantage of the economy and scale of public cloud resources. So significant enhancements to that to consolidate observability, security, and business data with um, custom and exploratory queries. Um, that was a very big announcement, especially since Grail has been so well received by the market. And then we also announced some other technology enhancements, including automation engine, um, App Engine, and then industry uh, partnerships to unveil a new generation of, of applications on Dynatrace. So it was, uh, it was a very packed conference with announcements. You folks made a lot of announcements there. Can you just you know, pick and choose, hey, these are some of the major announcements that you made there? I think the um, most timely announcement was the Grail um, Data Lakehouse enhancements. And the reason why is customers today, um, they're, you know, it's no question everybody is moving to cloud for agility and for the perceived cost advantages. But in the cloud, things can be much more complex, especially if you think about um, Kubernetes implementation, where you have additional layers of abstraction. So you have a lot of flexibility, but it introduces even more, for, for many customers, even more monitoring tools. And now you have um, this, this rapid expansion of, of monitoring tool sets that show you a fraction of the whole story where you're not getting a complete end-to-end -end observability of an understanding of what's really going on. So Grail Data Lakehouse takes um, that really, uh, you know, that challenge and addresses it specifically by consolidating all the data with full topology and dependency mapping context. So, um, you know, instead of doing, you're trying to, co you know, correlate information from different tool sets, you really can consolidate all of these tool sets or many of these tool sets at your own pace and customer decision down to a single platform that all the users for all use cases can use to simplify collaboration and sharing. Um, and it, it has embedded SmartScape topology and dependency mapping. So now you have causality between events. You actually know uh, what was the root cause, how that may have cascaded to other items. So it allows people to quickly identify issues or um, identify you know, issues before they become major outages. So to me, that was really the most um, timely announcement because everybody's trying to do more with less. Nobody's asking for additional tool sets. They're typically looking to reduce the number of tools that they have. 
which of these announcements were kind of most timely looking at the current market situation where companies are trying to focus on cost efficiency, smaller teams, and they are looking at uh, things like automation to, to help their teams? Well, I think if you start with the basic thesis of, of it's really, um, you know, revolutionary and disruptive to a number of adjacent industries to have all the data in a single place with full context. Think of that as like there's this gold mine of information with context that you never had before. How do you unlock the value of that data? And that's really what Automation Engine and App Engine are all about. It's making it easier for people to collaborate, easier to bring that information and insights to other platforms that are central. Um, most large companies have IT service management solutions that, that dictate the processes for how you make changes, or they may have orchestration platforms like Red Hat Ansible. And with the value that we have using Automation Engine, you can bring these insights to make these other solutions even more powerful. You make Ansible more powerful if you're bringing a bunch of answers from your data to it to be able to automate more workflows and do that better. You mentioned um, earlier about this migration to cloud. In the cloud, um, you do have agility, but what you really want in the cloud is a balance of, of resilience, performance, and efficiency or cost. And in the cloud, as people rush to cloud, if you don't have the right observability into your applications, into your underlying resources, what you tend to do is over allocate significantly and you are therefore overspending, perhaps not even assuring your performance levels or resiliency that you need, but you're wasting a bunch of money that could be preventing you from investing in other areas or slowing down cloud migration as a whole. So I think this um, automation engine and then app engine and we introduced a couple of apps on app engine including site reliability guardian and uh, carbon impact that will precisely help you make things more resilient or um, carbon impact being able to measure all your carbon impact and then you also have the utilization levels how much performance you have it allows you to reduce your carbon impact but that also means that you are generally spending less money when you're reducing your carbon impact. So cloud optimization, all of these things become um, much more AI driven when you have access to it through things like automation engine and app engine. As we are talking about these different personas, you know, SREs, DevOps, platform engineering, uh, how do we look at these tools or how do you perceive the things which are changing in the market so that, as you earlier said, to help team no matter where they are in their journey. I would also talk about the role of automation and AI, but let's talk about uh, uh, like platform engineering and DevOps a bit. Yeah, well, first, I think that shift left is a, is a real thing, and it's a real important thing. Um, if you look at the role of, of platform engineering, of DevOps, um, DevOps becoming DevSecOps and becoming biz DevSecOps, all of these things are expanding. So the role of uh, SRE, in my view, has never been more important, but it's involving more stakeholders and bringing more ownership into um, pre-production into the application development cycle so that you are able to prevent bad code or security vulnerabilities from actually getting into production by identifying them earlier. So, so in my mind, um, these roles are actually becoming a little bit more broader, a little bit more influential, and able to address a greater number of use cases. And, and it all comes with, you know, what's the you know, it, it's it, there's no longer I do observability, you do security, um, maybe you do business analytics. All of these things really are converging, right? So this is what I, I think is so exciting about the future that we're, we're heading toward is it allows everybody to collaborate more, to learn more about different disciplines, um, to share information more easily and to drive better 
business outcomes through technology. Can you talk about uh, the the importance of you know intelligent platform solutions, AI, ML, you know all these things, which help. Also, the fact is that we also talk about bringing back the developer experience, where developers are solving creative problems in creative way. They don't want to do mundane things. A mundane thing should be handed over to AI, ML. Uh, they are not going to take our jobs, AI, ML. They will just take over a lot of things that we are boring. We don't want to do that. So talk a bit about uh, the role of you know intelligent platform solutions. Uh, as you're talking about, you know, moving the whole thing forward, um, what do you see there? I think that um, what we find in our um, install base as we've gone through is that is that employees um, who embrace change, embrace AI, make themselves more valuable to the company. They have more rewarding work. They get more opportunities. Um, and their job satisfaction increases, right? We, I mean, this is one of the, you know, I would say consistent things we saw from analysts and journalist reports is that the Dynatrace customers that perform uh, really enjoy being Dynatrace customers. The longer you are a Dynatrace customer, the more you like Dynatrace. And that's not always true. Of, of some companies. Some companies, the longer you're, you're a customer, the more you wish you weren't a customer. So I, I think that's, I think that's the, the number one thing is everybody as an individual is thinking what's in it for me. And I do think that the role of AI um, has an important role to play in, in making our, our lives better. Um, and of course, there is there's a lot of potential downsides to AI, especially when you think about how it's used in media, how it can be used in advertising. But when we talk about end-to-end -end observability, um, you know, machine learning is is uh, understanding the past to predict patterns, and that has a role. It's very important, but in very dynamic environments um, where you are constantly changing the environment. You're encountering things that you've never seen before. And that's really where causal AI, um, which, which is really fundamental to, to Dynatrace, I think gives customers a, a leg up on understanding things that they've never seen before and knowing what to do about it. So that to me is... Uh, one of the most exciting things about the path forward. At the event, as you said, you know, last, I mean, different players of the whole ecosystem, they came there, you had a lot of discussions with them. What are some of the pain points that you still see customers are facing? Of course, beyond the economic condition, the, uh, situation that we are going through, like in general, with the adoption of cloud technologies, what are the challenges that you think that, hey, they are still facing, which are also in the role of Dynatrace, that, hey, we have to solve these problems for our customers. I think if you look at it, our number one competitor is still do it yourself. All right. And what is do it yourself? It may be that you're you have a bunch of teams that want to do their own monitoring. They want to, you know, um, do bespoke, you know, for for specific applications and they're very siloed organizations. And in some cases, they may be using um, what are considered platform companies, but those platform companies really have siloed data, um, or if they've consolidated data, it's all based on correlation and they can't do what, what uh, is commonly referred to as needle in the haystack queries or ask me anything without, you know, re-indexing rehydration. So um, what I see as common pain points is uh, I am so busy now, how do I save myself, right? How do I get time to save myself? How do I get everybody on board? And that's not a simple answer because at its root, it's a, it's a leadership and cultural thing amongst customers. You have to have really the, the willpower to change. And frankly, there's the reason you have early adopters, early mainstream, late mainstream, and laggards is companies move at different paces. And I think what, what you've seen over the last few years is that companies that are more aggressively adopting technology, and this is bearing out with, with um, Gartner and a bunch of their reset resources, is, is the more you adopt these end-to-end -end observability solutions, the better it is for your business. So I, I think it's just a, a natural thing of 
how quickly can we change what's the right pace for our company. Bob, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about uh, uh, the larger ecosystem, the challenges and how Dynatrace is helping and also how Perform is kind of bringing, as you said, you know, different you know players of the ecosystem together to reconnect and to also talk to each other and sometimes bringing them together solves a lot of problem either way. So thanks for sharing all those insights and I would love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It was great. Uh, it was great getting to know you better and would love an opportunity to come back at another date.